still got to talk and do this, so it's still a little early. Why do you smell like that? It's the gel in my hair. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Who> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to this week's edition of Knitter Be Damned. Good morning. Am I supposed to do that at the same time? Sure, why not? I'm sorry. Knitter be damned. All right, then. Um, and I have to say, we're a little late getting started because Philip had to go fix his hair. Apparently, it, was, it wasn't it was up and as fashionably twisted as I had it last week. Now, see, look, with all the Patreon money we get, we're going to have to use towards Philip getting a stylist. <laughs> Makeup! See, I don't need a stylist because I'm cute. Well, in the dark, anyway. <laughs> uh, my husband said, what? <laughs> That's right. What, one minute into the show, we've already nailed it. Boom. Boom. Oh, I'm going to have a cigarette. That's the preamble to our show. Um, <clears throat> we were outside discussing uh, today's show in beautiful, sunny central Florida. Okay, and uh, vitamin C for the day. Yeah, and uh, I tell you, there's nothing like a spring D. day. What? Vitamin D for the day. What did you say? C. Well, both are accurate. Are they? Yeah. I can get you some little hops and wheat and barley, too. Fair. Anyway, we're outside. It's a beautiful sunny day in Central Florida. And I got to tell you, the only thing that was missing was Edith Piaf. That's it. That's it. The only thing that was missing. Her particularly? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's nothing like a spring day sitting out there having lunch. Well, we weren't having lunch, but... Walk down the road with me, if you will. Beautiful spring day. It's nice and sunny. You're in the grass with a blanket. Edith Piaf is playing. I mean, how could you not enjoy spring like that? I suppose. I agree. I know who Edith Piaf is, and I... Piaf. Ha ha. Piaf. Right? Piaf. Piaf. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, but I didn't give her her name. Uh, I love her. She's great, uh, by the way. Uh, I just don't think of her in a spring day kind of thing moment. So, anyway. Well, she did die tragically, so that probably is more of a, you know, Halloween death winter. How did she die? Uh, alcohol poisoning. Oh, nice. <laughs> Cheers, Miss Pia. Sorry. Oops. Anyway, on with the show. Yes, yes. <laughs> What's first on our agenda today? Oh, yeah, so our knitting topic this week was, what's it like having... Two people Profe trying to work, be professional knitters. Yeah, two people who work in fiber arts living in the same house. Um, one knitter and one crocheter. Uh, what is that like? Well, most of the time we spend 12 hours apart from each other because, God forbid, we interrupt each other and miss our counts because then we just get irritated. That is the curse you hear more often yeah. around this house is shut up on counting. Counting. And don't mention any numbers, numbers at all. They're like it's no. blasphemy or so in a knitting, the knitting and crocheting world. Um, yeah, you'll be you'll be on like row like nine, and he'll come in the room and say, "Hey, I just saw these seven interesting little tidbits about," and you're like, Rah. "What number was I on? I have no idea." <laughs> Shut it. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's speaking, uh, yeah. speaking of cursing, um, Philip, you're going to keep your word and. Not. I'm attempting to, as you see, I'm stuttering a little more than I usually do because I'm having to cut the curse words out of my speech. I think, okay, there are some that are probably permissible. We'll let ass fly and shit out of an ex, uh, ex what do you call it, uh, exclamation. An exclamative. Um, but let's avoid the F word and the, the D word. And the, What's the D word? And the S-ing of D. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, I guess I, I, I do have to mention from last week, um, I have to make some corrections. Apparently, I can um, be a racist and a bigot. I apologize. Um, it doesn't matter what my fellatio preferences are. Um, Where and secondly, is this going? because we were supposed to talk about it. And secondly, I can be a homophone. <laughs> yes. Because my name is Phil, and the word Phil sound the same, are spelled differently, and have two completely different meanings. So officially, I am a homophone. Um, I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, That's going to be the name of my next book. I married a homophone. I married a homophone. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up. I had to. I was like, what is that all the about? The gay man's guide to... <laughs> to and then marrying. I realized that was one of them. Oh my God. Yeah, the gay man's guide to marrying a homophone. <laughs> yep. And who else would that go for? Bill, Phil, Bob. 
Bill Bill doesn't count because Bill spelled Bill in all ways is still B I L L. Oh, fair. Because I guess I was thinking bile. Um, I don't know why. Um, okay. So I just wanted to correct that. I'm sorry. A lot of people thought it was really funny, and I thought I, I sounded pretty damn ignorant when I was trying to describe myself as not being a bigot or a. I think they or got or a, a kick out of it. But they got a kick out of it. Yeah. I have to th- thank you, everybody, for. <laughs> For liking what my, what my husband said. Yeah, we were thinking about getting T-shirts done at some point, and we wanted a nice little tagline. So we figured it would be we were going to do a vote. It was going to be I'm a homophone, or um, I'm a one-handed man. I'm, or a one-hand, one-hand I'm the man. one-hand man. Yeah. <laughs> so every week I think we'll have a vote on what like, I say. It sounds like a Johnny Cash song. That's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Man. The man in black and the one-handed man. <laughs> the one-hand man. So those are the corrections from last week. Mm. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I'm almost done with my cigarettes, so that means we're almost done with the preamble. Oh, is that what's going on we're here? We're just rambling. Oh, okay. Prambling. Prambling or rambling? Prambling. Uh, isn't that a pram? Isn't a pram a, a baby's carriage in Britain? Yeah. Okay. A Did, stroller. Is that called a pramble? When you take a baby for a walk in a pram? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll ask our friends in the UK. Yeah, I just wonder, what do you call it? it? Is it called prambling? <laughs> I, don't, I, I wasn't sure. And, I, and I'm not making fun of British culture. I actually am a big fan of British culture. Yeah, let's um, not piss off the Brits because ooh. it's kind of funny that... Um, the Brits have written more print articles about me than my own is country. Is that funny? It is kind of funny. Because they don't take your sex or views into account. They just take your knitting capability in your story? I don't know. I just think they find me endearing. I do, so I guess somebody else should do. <laughs> it's a prerequisite, yeah. I guess. Oh, I have to have my knitting. <clears throat> so we don't get banned from knitting groups. So <laughs> That's right. That's funny. Oh, and also, thank you for the comment on uh, maybe I should stop trying to do circles and trying to count while I do all this. So today I'm just working on tails. Uh, we'll see how long they get. Um, yeah, and I'm working on something I don't have to count on. Yeah. No, not that. No, you know what I mean. I, I'm working on something I don't have to count my rows. So, but I do or count on probably this. Count on because <laughs> you do count this. on this. It's gonna. Somebody's getting this bear, and somebody's getting yeah. this tail. We just don't know who's getting them yet. Now that sounds like a gay joke, right there. Somebody's it's, getting this tail, and someone's getting this bear. That's right. <laughs> Someone's getting this bear. I am not a bear. And someone's getting this tail. I am the hairless Sasquatch people. I am nothing resembling a bear other than my protrusion. <coughs> See, that was even filthy. It's <laughs> <laughs> just, just quit while you're ahead. I'm sorry. I, do, I call it vocabulary, and it's a little fun. Um, oh, man. We, we definitely See? should make a penny or two on innuendo. One tail down. All right, so the topic was what it's like to have fiber artists live in the same house. And we don't mean like if there's two at a, in a family of five. We mean more like if there are three people living in that house and all three of them. And our cats don't knit or crochet, so it really is just two of us. If they could, we'd put them to work. Yeah. That's all we're going to say. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, but. Um, Child Phillip, labor laws keep us from working. Okay, Philip, what are your thoughts on it? Um, we usually leave each other alone, like I stated before. Like any inter- interruption can... Um, actually uh, upset either one of us if it's really important on what we're doing at the moment. Yeah. So we leave each other alone for 12 to 16 hours at a day. We meet for lunch in the middle of the day um, and then we go back to work. Uh, so we don't see each other all the time, even though we live in a two-bedroom apartment I see. With our I children. Think, I, think, I think that's important because we have to have our own separate spaces. I mean, since yes. we both work from home, I can't have you up my butt all day long. Nope, and I'm bad about that. Yeah. Um, Especially, uh, this is not a big apartment by any means. So we have to have our own corners to go to and kind of just focus while we're there. And uh, And funny enough, his office is in the dining room, and I have a bedroom in the back that I call my studio, and it's where I do all my painting and my crocheting, whatever else I'm going to do for the day. Yeah. Uh, So we do leave each other our spaces. Uh, so oh, we can get our big, work done. Yes, that's the big one. Uh, usually we cooperate together to do packaging and, and, and mailing things out. Uh, but for the most part, as far as a work day goes, which are extremely long, uh, some of the longest work days I've ever had. And I was a cook for almost 25 years, and I'd work 10, 15, 10, 12 hour days. And now doing this for a living, I'm working more because I'm working for myself. Um, 
Gregory takes care of all the marketing, and I'm just pretty much production of my own gift here. Uh, I also think that one of the best things is is like, damn, I'm out of black. And hey, sweetheart, do you have any black? Yes, we can. We sometimes <laughs> we can share stashes. Um, it's difficult more with me as someone was saying how big they saw my my strange friends are. They are because I use these gigantic appendages here as all my measurements. Uh, so I can't do th small things. That's why I use such a large crochet needle. It's because I have big hands and I have trouble with the small, intricate work as far as like a small thread or a small needle would entail. Uh, so for you big guys out there, I was wondering if you have the same trouble I have for um, big hands, I know you're the one, uh, <laughs> have trouble with holding your stick while you're doing small crochet, because I definitely do. Um, I, I just, I decided not to do it, and that's why I will strand uh, two and three threads together. So, um, when you consider uh, that we both have our own separate spaces, um, <laughs> every once in a time, I can hear him in his space in the back room, and I'll be like, what the hell is going on there? Like, so the other day, he was cackling up a storm. I was like, what the hell's going on back there? You were watching. Uh, you were watching Graham Norton. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. A okay. uh, Graham Norton show with so, uh, Patrick Stewart and uh, Hugh Jackman. I um, spied on him and uh, took this little video clip for you to see <laughs> Philip in his natural habitat crocheting while watching Graham Norton. Roll tape! Our next topic was, okay, so, um, I double. It's my cheat sheet. Yes, yes. Okay. He's leading this conversation. Uh, I'm the moderator. <laughs> so okay. So our next topic is um, okay. So being knitters, uh, we often sit in front of our laptops and we listen to things or um, watch documentaries or something like that that isn't totally too engaging yeah. because it's hard to knit and watch. Well, for me it is. I, 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 well, I'm an auditory person. I need to just listen to things. I've discovered I love music. You know, it's, I'm really into um, obscure music uh, bands and titles, so I find myself listening to the radio a lot because it's the only thing that doesn't distract me. I'm to the point where I can't watch television while I'm trying to do work. I did when I first got here and I found out my production was really, really way under par. Anyway, go ahead. So we decided we'd add a new uh, category, movie reviews, since we watch a lot of uh, movies and documentaries and things like that while we're knitting. And uh, Philip, did you have a pick for this week? Well, I can, uh, give me a minute, because it was just thrown at me just now. I knew about it. It was not just 20 now. minutes ago, I have to like think about a movie review. It was like an hour and a half ago. Um, so yesterday I watched the new <laughs> Doctor Strange. Um, so and what do you think? I, it was fucking incredible. So far, I believe it may, oh. It's all right, go ahead. Keep so going. far, I believe it may be one of the best um, Marvel movies to date. Uh, I'm waiting for Logan. I haven't seen that one yet, so I'm gonna. But apparently, that's completely rated R and and, and more adult than any of them have been. But as far as storyline, um, it it was great. The the character build was was beautiful. Um, I was afraid it was going to be like the other movies where they were just recreations of uh, previous animated Marvel films. Which, if you're a fan, you kind of see that with the Chitauri and the way the Avengers animated movies were like the first two Avengers movies. Um, but oh, Doctor Strange was great. It was fu funnier than I expected to be. And I'm not a big fan of old Cumber Bunch. Um, <laughs> but he did a wonderful job. And, and so did uh, um, oh, Tilda, Tilda Swinton Tilda as the Swinton. ancient one. She was, ma she was marvelous. Marvelous. She okay. was incredible. Okay, if you can, and I don't need to make this about me all the time. Yeah, well. But you should go to my blog. There's a little... Um, surprisingly enough, that's the moral of the story of the movie. What? It's not always about you. Funny enough. Go ahead. Sorry, I had to put that. <laughs> Funny enough, sorry. My husband's sitting right <laughs> 
Okay. Anyway, if you go to my blog, and there's a little, um, what do you call that, magnifying glass icon over in the far right. Yes. You click on that and you can search. You should search for Tilda Swinton Eats Boiled Peanuts. There's a blog I did, and there's a photograph of me because when I was younger, I looked an awful lot like Tilda Swinton. And uh, so that's all I wanted to say about it. It wasn't about me. It's just the, the, the moral, literally the moral of the story was literally Doctor Strange. It's not always about me. Spoiler, by the way. I guess I should have put that at the beginning. Um, but it really was. It was it was well done, well filmed. The graphics were stunning. It was like walking into an art piece. Stunning. stunning. See, I haven't watched it because... I, He's not a fan. I'm not a fan of the Cumberbunch. Um, yeah. I get past it because I'm a comic book Marvel fan, so it it didn't matter other than I've seen, um, what's his other show, Sherlock Holmes? Didn't yeah. care for it at all. Yeah, yeah. boring. Um, so that's what you I expected. You know who did the best Sherlock was? Um, uh, Rathborn. No, Ian McKellen as Sherlock Holmes. Oh, yeah. Was, that, was, that was a brilliant movie. Mr. Holmes. Your, Mr. Holmes. That's the movie. But, um... Yeah, I haven't seen uh, Doctor Strange only that, but but that kind of movie, the CGI intensive movies, I love to sit and watch because I love a good disaster. Film. I watched it three times in one okay, day. Okay, I will sit and watch Downton Abbey all day long and cry, yeah. but then I'll be <laughs> I'll make a point that I have to go find a disaster film afterwards to make himself to, feel better. Yeah, just, <laughs> look, society's being destroyed. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, your love of disaster films is quite maniacal. So my um, pick for movie review was The Arrival. Hated it. Hated it. Yeah, I haven't seen that one. I haven't seen it. He previewed it for us. Oh, Go ahead. man. Oh, it took forever to get to the fun parts. And when you got to the fun parts, it got all cockamamie towards the end. Like, you know, this... Spoiler alert. Okay, I'll give you a second if you haven't seen it. Just stand away for a minute. It goes backwards and forwards in time, like uh, spoilers. It just, it, it just got really, really cockamamie. Now, did you know while it was happening that it was happening? Like you were going back and forth through time? No. Okay. No. One of the and that was the other thing that bothered me was the sound production of the aliens and the music was so much louder than the people actually talking. Because you know it's like, and then when they start talking. And you're like, what? Oh, sh shit. And then my speakers start blowing. I know that's why this speaker over here is crackling now. Because right, of because that of the damn movie. Yeah. Well, it's like that on anything lately. It seems like the commercials have been jacked up a thousand times compared to whatever you're watching on even YouTube. I, yeah. Constantly, we have to, like, you have to run for the remote to turn it down because you, you're going to blow your speakers out. It's insane. Hey, uh, someone requested that, um, well, bring him here, bring him here. Someone requested Ugh. a cameo from, you're not going to see Mario, I promise. Oh, yeah, this is Bacon. That's Bacon. Um, he wanted to get to the window, but I'm sure he was afraid to walk in front of the laptop. Oh. <laughs> um, all right, so we, we asked people to uh, send in some questions. Oh, yeah. yeah. Q&A. <laughs> um, okay, so let's just get started then, shall we? Okay. Um, should we, yeah, why not? We might as well just use their names. Dolores Coyle uh, wanted to know, what is the absolute last date to start knitting multiple Christmas presents? Um, Dolores, I would say the last date is um, the 4th of July. Absolutely. Um, start right after Christmas and no, don't even, don't even go up near October. If you've got like three or four <coughs> projects for three or four people, I You better know. have a few months. Yeah, I don't know how intense those projects are, but let's say about 4th of July, let it ride, and, and that way you can take your time. And then make your cutoff date Halloween. Let's say if I haven't finished it Halloween... You're not going to be able to. No. Yeah. That's because you don't want that kind of... Christmas is already hectic enough already, um, and you don't want to put yourself in that kind of stress because it's not necessary. Anyway... Um, Kate Scott, and we love Kate Scott. Kate Scott said, should I make my boyfriend a sweater? No! <laughs> Absolutely not. And not as a gift. No. No, it's a curse. Now, you can make things for your children, you can make things for your parents, you can make things for your brothers and sisters and close friends. When it comes to your partner or spouse or boyfriend, never, ever, ever without some kind of payment. He can just give you a quarter. There's some kind of curse. It's almost like getting a tattoo of your 
a partner's name on your Ooh. arm and then you break up. It ha seems to happen all the time. Someone will make something for their partner and it crashes and burns the, the relationship suffers. Which is funny because you got to realize that you're putting your soul and your energies into this thing you're making. Yeah. So that could have something to do with that um, on a... On a uh, uh, so, yes. Metaphysical the, energy level. You could make your boyfriend a sweater, but ask for a quarter in return. Yes. Or a dollar. I agree with that. Something like that. It has to be an exchange. Okay. Uh, Joseph Tibbetts. Uh, hey, we got a guy. Yeah. Yay, Yay. Joseph. All right. Hi. How about it, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> what advice would you give to someone just getting started? Okay, I wrote a great piece called Advice for the Novice Knitter. Again, if you go to my blog and you see the little magnifying glass, it's a search tool, search for Advice for the Novice Knitter. There's some really fun stuff that I wrote about uh, uh, for someone who's just getting started. And I think you'll crack up. And I think you also see that some of it is actually justified. Somebody said it was very new agey and touchy feeling. I was like, well, that wouldn't have been a very good read if I had just given. Find the right needles for the right project. And then after that, <laughs> sit down and find the perfect YouTube video. Now. That's a weird voice you're putting in there because it gives me like this 1984 big television, big brother kind of feel to it. Like if you speak to someone like this, suddenly they will be hypnotized into doing what you want them to do. Uh, <clears throat> Mary Pat Trainer, hers started out uh, actually really cool. Uh, what is a lifeline? Because I thought it was wine. Why use a lifeline? I feel you, sister, I feel you. Um, but her serious question was, what notions, crochet, crochet hooks, uh, stitch markers, etc., should a knitter have and why? I don't think you need any of those stitch holders, okay. none of that Wait, stuff. Wait, though, what, what, here's a, here's a uh, 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 pullback for that. Would that not help our counting issue with, with uh, talking with each other, or does that just make it longer to get the project done? Yeah, you know, they do have those little counter things that, so if I were talking to you, I'd be like knitting and going click, and knitting and going click. No, no, aren't they talking about the things you slip in between the stitches to show where your stitches Well, that's a are? stitch marker. Okay. Okay, so they sell stitch markers, but I think it's silly, when all you really need is a piece of... Uh, yarn. Yarn <laughs> tied up, and it's a contrasting color, like if you're working on something white, do bright Black, red. Or right, yes. Yeah. Something you can see and then cut out yeah, later. Yeah, exactly. Well, it doesn't, it just kind of, it flows with your piece. When you get to it, it slips onto the next needle and you slip it back on. Okay. Just like you would a stitch marker. So save yourself $2.50. That's, on that one. That's how I and did it because I didn't know what a stitch marker was. Is stitch holders look like these giant safety pins yes. and again I think it's a waste of money. Just get yourself a nice long string and um, thread, thread a needle with the string, pull it through your live stitches and then tie it up in a knot and those are your live stitches and yeah I mean it's crazy that they have all these really these are tools to help you out. Man, these are tools to rob to, you to of rob your you bag. <laughs> How much was that yarn stitch holder? It was $4. How much did you get? I got two. So those little pieces of metal that you could probably bend a, a, a safety pin, not a safety pin, a paper so, clip into also. Okay, and we also have like, anytime like, we're, like I'm making a bear or anything like that, I have all these extra just small pieces left over for um, that kind of thing. Um, so rather than having to go, oh crap, I don't have a stitch holder, here you go, you know. And I use my spur pieces if I'm going to do actual yarn hair on, uh, on one of my dolls. Now as, and as far as crochet hooks and um, uh, knitting needles go, I say if it's a crochet hook, stay somewhere between F and H because the majority of projects focus on that size because I think it's a sporting weight. It's, it's, a, it's oh, okay. a very common size yarn and it's the common size in a project. So F, G, and H. And if you're one above or one below, mm -hmm. don't worry too much about it. I mean, people have to be really specific about doing a swatch first to get the gauge right. And I'm like, man, that's all about your tension. And tension Which is important learn. because if your life is going to crap and you're sitting there knitting like this, <laughs> it's gonna yeah, be your tension is going to be sucky anyway. Yeah, yeah. But if you're kind of about laissez-faire and a little buzzed and you're going, eh, it's going to be lazy. In the so screw all that. For knitting needles, I say, say uh, seven, eight, nine, around there. If a project calls for nine and you only have an eight, go for it. Don't worry about it. It's, it's one size up and one size down. I would never worry about that. All right. 
Uh, Caroline French wants to know, not for knitting, but for crochet. There you go. Okay. How do I know what size hook I need to use for the wool I have? Well, usually your your wool on the label should tell you. Shall we show a label? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Oh, we should have been more prepared. We're not. But we were busy putting up a bed sheet and grabbing a couple of beers, so excuse yeah. us. And I will say that um, I pretty much use only one needle. Again, my I have these gigantic hands, and this needle fits. But on the back, if you look, is it going to do it? Oh, it's backwards. We're on mirror oh, mode. Oh, we're not on mirror mode. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. On the back of the scheme, <laughs> there is a little diagram, and it tells you the thickness, uh, what needles to use for crocheting, what needles to use for knitting, uh, the, the, the diameter of the needle. Uh, yeah, so it, it shares all that information on the yarn itself. For, um, for instance, this one has, over here, it has a set a, a pair of knitting needles, looks like an X, yes. that's why you know, mm -hmm. and it says US 7. And over here it has a crochet hook, and it says uh, US H. So and if you notice, uh, uh, knitting needles are numbers, crochet needles are letters, is usually how it works out. Uh, yes, until you get to the fine ones, then it's milliliters, I think it is. It, milliliters? Milliliters. Millimeters. <laughs> <laughs> this the chance that I've been, been given. Those See, thank God you don't really know. He doesn't really know. Whoa. Whoa. Um, I was going to say, uh, thank you for all the questions that you sent us this week. Uh, bring them. Bring them on. More. We'll answer them. Uh, they can be... Knitting questions, crochet questions, political questions. Um, what's your favorite sock? You know, do you have? What's your favorite? Sock? I don't know. Hey, that's what he said. What's your favorite sock? Um, <laughs> you see, you still didn't care. It's not what. What did he say? It's my husband said, said what? It's we need a cue card for. <laughs> I am my own cue card. Because uh, maybe you too can be a homophone. Just look it up. <laughs> so I married a homophone. You married a homophone. <laughs> good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.